Turning Red is Disney Pixar's latest film and totally not what happened to me when I got rejected by my prom date. Director Domi Shi set this film in my hometown of Toronto, Canada, and I'm just a little upset there weren't any appearances by Drake or Justin Bieber. Could you imagine if we did a birthday cake? Waffle Timbit. This man is a genius. There is, however, a dreamy boy band by the name of Four Town, which has got to be a mix of O Town and Toronto based boy band before Four. Yeah, that was a thing. So in this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into Turning Red, its ending, Easter eggs, including ones hinting at the new Lightyear movie, and a whole lot more. If I may, here's our film's protagonist, Mei Mei, a 13-year-old girl who has developed an unusual skill of turning into my worst nightmare, a furry. Her given name, Mei Lin, comes from Chinese, meaning beautiful rose, which I thought was a great choice considering the film's emphasis on red and accepting who we are. All her life, Mei's lived by one rule. The number one rule in my family, honor your parents. A theme which is expressed in other Asian-focused Disney films such as Mulan. You'll bring honor to us all. But as May notes early on, if you live your entire life honoring your parents, you may forget to honor yourself. Our introduction to May is filled with tons of cool Easter eggs. Here you can see iconic Toronto landmarks like this CN Tower and Skydome. The film is set in 2002, so if you were to go to Toronto today, the Skydome is now called the Rogers Centre. All hail our corporate overlords. May carries with her a Tamagotchi, a popular toy from the early 2000s. It also acts as a metaphor for the changes May experiences. Tamagotchis would change and evolve with love and care, just like May will. She calls hers Robert Jr. Junior, named after one of the singers in Four Town. Fun fact, my parents couldn't afford to get me a Tamagotchi, so I had to get the knockoff version, a Dinky Dino. The attention to detail about Toronto here is staggering. Here are the Toronto streetcars, and they even got the interiors of them correct. May's school, named after Canadian Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson, is where we're introduced to May's friends, Miriam, Abby, and Priya. The Daisy Mart where Dreamboat Devon works is an actual chain of convenience stores found around the city. Even the musical notes in the back here play the Canadian National Anthem. In the background of Chinatown, which Toronto has one of the largest of in North America, we can see Bao Restaurant, named after the short film the director won an Oscar for in 2019. You can even make out this dragon sculpture in the background called Gateway, which marks the main intersection of Chinatown. For May, life is a mix of honoring her parents and being true to herself. At least that's what she thinks. Her mother basically has full control over her. I do make my own moves. It's just that some of my moves are also hers. If she's gonna grow into a young woman who makes her own decisions, some big changes are gonna have to be made. Let's introduce Sun Yi, Mei's ancestor of whom the temple is built around. Legend says that she asked the gods to turn her into a red panda to protect her family when the men went off to war, and ever since then the red panda blessing has been passed down to every female in the family. However, this blessing is now seen more as a curse. For you Canadians out there, you might remember the colors in this logo when the ad for the four towns concert plays. It's for much music, basically the Canadian version of MTV. But the real story doesn't really begin until May turns into her fursona for the first time. Yes, I just said that. One of the most crucial scenes in the movie is May literally turning red as her mother embarrasses her in front of Dreamy Devon, revealing her lovey-dovey drawings in front of her schoolmates. And you know it's a Canadian convenience store when they sell maple syrup. It's here we can really see how May's mother, Ming, is overprotective of her daughter. She constantly keeps keeps watch on her at school and forbids anything that may dishonor the family. And it's the day after this huge embarrassment that May first turns into this panda, with her mother mistaking May's odd behavior as her getting her first period. Jin, it's happening! My God, okay, it's happening! May will soon find out that it's not just embarrassment which turns her into a red panda, but any heightened emotion. Thus, May's turning becomes a metaphor for her having no control over her life or her own choices. Just like she has no control over her life, she also has no control over the panda. But when her mom finds out May has this mystical power, it's time to tell her the truth. This is an affliction that runs in the family, but there is a cure. At the next red moon, a ritual can be performed to trap the panda forever, which is something all the women in the Lee family have done. 
But there's just one problem. The Big Four Town concert that she wants to go to more than anything ever is before the ritual. If she can prove to her mom that she can control this panda, maybe she can go. She even makes a sweet slideshow. There's just one other problem. The tickets cost 200 bucks each. So May devises a plan to hustle her panda and sell merch for some sweet, sweet loonies and toonies. Yes, our money is called loonies and toonies. But every time May lets out the panda, it will make the ritual harder to perform. But each time you do, the stronger it gets and then you'll be bound to it forever. When Ming discovers that her daughter has been secretly using her panda power, she shows up at this guy Tyler's place, we don't like Tyler, and chastises her friends for putting May up to this. And May has the opportunity to tell the truth to her mother and explain it was actually all her idea, but May doesn't. As she'll say later on, her obsession with her mom's approval was too strong. I've been like obsessed with my mom's approval my whole life. I couldn't take losing it. Losing you guys feels even worse. And if things couldn't get any worse, May finds out that the Four Town concert is the same night as her ritual, so all that hard work she put into going was for nothing. One of May's aunts makes reference to the number four being unlucky in Chinese culture. That's because it sounds a lot like the Cantonese word for death. Although Ming also went through this ritual when she was younger, she never opens up to May about her experience. That's because Ming and her mother had a big fight, which it's implied resulted in grandmother getting this scar over her eye. This is part of the reason why Ming is so adamant her daughter banishes the panda. She doesn't want to see her go through this same pain and falling out that she experienced with her own mother. In typical Disney fashion, there's always that one character who's wiser than the rest. In Turning Red, this falls on May's father, Jin. He's a side character for much of the film, but shares a heartwarming scene with his daughter about being different. People have all kinds of sides to them, May. And some sides are messy. The point isn't to push the bad stuff away, it's to make room for it. It's the complete opposite mentality of Ming and the other women of the family who have pushed away this quote-unquote bad side their entire lives. On the night of the Red Moon, May is ready to undergo the ritual which involves summoning a portal to May's ancestral plane. It's there her ancestor Sun Yi holds a mirror to her, allowing her to separate the panda from her body, trapping it into the medallion found on Mr. Gao's sword. But as she looks back at this panda that has actually helped her grow as a person, she can't let go of it. This is one of the first times in the movie where May makes her own decision, finally taking control of her own life, a decision which goes against her mother's wishes. As she escapes her family, her mother's medallion, which contains her panda, cracks. And just like May's panda appears during moments of heightened emotion, so too does Ming's, whose angered her daughter went against her will. The film's climax takes place at the Sky Dome where the Toronto Blue Jays play, hence why a Blue Jay is here near the end. And what May thought would be a time to make up with her friends and enjoy the soothing sounds of Fort Town goes to hell when her mother's Godzilla-like panda bears down on the dome. Get it? Bears down? Ugh. Ming tells her daughter that this isn't who she is, but in an act of defiance, May stands up for herself. Well, sorry I'm not perfect! Sorry I'm not good enough! And sorry I'll never be like you! Very Canadian with all those sorries. She knocks her mother out, but if they're gonna get her into that ritual circle, May will need the strength of her family to drag her back into it. That's when her family shatter their jewelry, unleashing their pandas to help May. Even Fortown joins in to help sing, which is all part of the ritual process. I always knew the ancient Chinese had an affinity for boy bands. The plan seems to work, and soon May is transported back to the ancestral plane where she sees a young version of her mother crying. She's crying because she hurt her mother, and it's here we see why Ming has been such an overbearing and protective mother. She has become the thing she hated while growing up, her own mother. I'm just so sick of being perfect. I'm never going to be good enough for her. Or anyone. May tells her that it isn't true and that she's good enough, and as she leads her back we see her mother grow older back to her normal age. At the portal back to the real world, her family awaits. Ming and grandmother make up after all these years, but it's time for May to make her own final decision on what she's gonna do. I'm finally figuring out who I am, but 
I'm scared it'll take me away from you. Her mother says not to hold herself back and that she couldn't be prouder, and with that, May embraces her panda and decides to have it be a part of her. May's family have their pandas in a colorful new assortment of containers, like Ming's in May's old Tamagotchi and grandmother's in a four-town necklace. The damage at the Sky Dome runs in the millions of dollars, so naturally the Lee family turns the temple into a tourist attraction now equipped with the red panda herself to help pay off the bill. May ends posing a question to us, the viewer. We all have an inner wild and weird side that we keep hidden away. A lot of us never let it out, but May embraced hers and grew as a person because of it. Will you keep yours hidden, or will you let yours out? Now for some more fun with extra Easter eggs. Tyler here wears a number 15 purple basketball jersey, which was the number of star player Vince Carter for the Toronto Raptors back in 2002. The Bag Sport backpack here is a play off a popular backpack brand, Jansport. Here's a top deck, that miniature skateboard. In the back here, we can see a little stuffed bear with a maple leaf on it, a nod to the Toronto Maple Leafs hockey team. This actually appears throughout the film, like here in the background in Chinatown. At Twilight spoof Nightfall by author Roberta Moyer. The real author's name is Stephanie Mayer. In Maeve's room on her notepad, we can see a Burrow Bunny sticker and a Pearl plushie on her desk, which are characters from Disney Pixar's Spark Shorts program, which was created to highlight new storytellers. And how about some delicious Tim Hortons Timbits, a Canadian delicacy? And you know Pixar always loves to throw in Easter eggs for their upcoming movies. In this case, it's Lightyear, which you can find the logo for Star Command on the back of Miriam's skateboard. There's almost always a Pizza Planet Easter egg like here when May's trying to make it to the concert. Another staple, A113, the number of the Pixar Animation Classroom at the California Institute of the Arts, which can be found on the four-town ticket in the end credits. Abby's character also looks like she's dressed like Boo's Door from Monsters, Inc. And last but certainly not least, this one took me forever to find, but the Luxo Ball, which can be found floating in the pool during the party scene. That's it for this video. Like and subscribe to help the channel out, and leave a comment on what you thought about the movie or if you found any extra Easter eggs. Thanks for watching everyone, and for more bad takes, you can always follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember... Ride or die!